Hot diggity dog. IKR. <laughs> Ready? Yep. If you mess up, just pause for five seconds and start where you left, where you messed up. <laughs> Which is funny because I started the video with a five second pause. <laughs> like, I've already messed up. <laughs> that way I can edit it out. Gotcha. Yeah, I did video I editing for like video. five years at our last video. church. Yeah. Video stuff. Video. Well, not like that video. We, we, we went like, we actually filmed at Guinness Book of World Records. This guy broke like 30 something baseball bats. And then. We accidentally filmed over it with fireworks. It was awful. <laughs> oh my word. I'm not even kidding. Oh, shoot. It was terrible. But we're just going to have a good conversation about, about being ourselves and about about connecting with people and about 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 letting God five second pause work 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 through our five second pause through through our for through our 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 ourselves cd is skipping guys we're skipping that one two three go hey guys it is the wizard show and today with me i have this this little fella here me amo daniel what do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Daniel Blanchard. I live in Georgia. He lives uh, in Georgia, and see, <laughs> the <yeah>. point is, <laughs> I am not a representation of what all Georgians are are like. Yeah, we'll just put that out. You know, just and just I a warning. Don't I, represent anyone who might be associated with me, <laughs> like okay. my parents or or me being on the video. Right? It's not his fault. It's not my parents' fault. Anything I say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it. <laughs> well, the, point is, the point is, I was down in the Florida in Prison Crusade, uh, which I mentioned last week, and then I came back up toward home, and I stopped here in Atlanta, Georgia, and <laughs> they, they, her, his parents had room for me to stay in, so I got There was room in the inn, yeah. unlike with Mary and Joseph. <laughs> exactly. Poor Mary and Joseph. Anyway, this is going to be a very random show, because he's got, he's got this random personality, very creative personality. And we're actually going to talk about personality a little bit. So, so anyway, hold on to your shorts and let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you like let to me, say. Let me re say that. I don't like that. Okay. Five. <laughs> we we counted to five. Okay. One, two, two three, three, four, five. five. So hold on to your bandanas. We're going to go at this thing strong. So, <laughs> we're gonna do with this thing strong. I said, creative personality. We're gonna laugh through this whole thing, but it's gonna be good because we're gonna glorify Jesus. Now the pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Funny fire? You talking about last night? Funny fire? Yeah. What was it? Georgian Banoff or something? I don't know. Oh, oh no, no, it was the dude at the prison. You're talking about? He was like, he was asking people if they had uh, if they had found his something. Found his voice. Talking. Yeah, I found his voice in their body. Yeah, there's this... I gotta, I gotta tell you this story. There's this guy, this older gentleman, he's like 77 years old. He got this little fire for Jesus. And he's he got this funny personality, too. And for some reason, his voice was, you know, given out. You know how it does sometimes. And in prison, so he when he, so he goes up to start a conversation, he'd go up to an inmate and be like, Hey, um, have any of you seen my voice? I, th I think it may be in your pocket or something, you know. It's just funny because he started that conversation with them, and but the thing is, he could connect <laughs> with them. He could, he could connect with them through that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's good because humor is a good way to start conversations and meet people. Right. Like there was these three kids at Chick Fil A. I actually wrote them a poem, but <laughs> they were. <laughs> yeah, it was something like. Uh, there's these three kids in Chick Fil A, and. I don't remember. But they were playing with this balloon, and I just started staring at them like. Yeah. And they were just. They, and then, like. They got freaked There was out. this little counter, and so we were both, like, popping over the counter and, like, going back down. It was. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. And I was sitting there, and, like, they were trying to clean, like, the, the room, and they were like, I can't clean over there, because Daniel's sitting there. <laughs> They're, like, talking about me, like, right around the corner. They think I can't hear. I'm like. No, I think I can. Five second pause.
You said whenever we need to edit, it's a five second pause. We should probably edit that part out. It's Chick Fil A. Why do they need to know about Chick Fil A? What is Chick? Well, Chick Fil A is a Christian corporation that glorifies God with chicken. Do you know how good their chicken is? He has. You had Chick Fil A today, right? I had this morning. Yes. He had Chick Fil A for the first time. It was good. It was really. It's good. always a touching moment. First time someone has Chick Fil A. Touching moment. Yeah. <laughs> really tugs your heartstrings. There was this kid from Australia at tennis, and he went to Chick Fil A, and he was like, he didn't really care, and then he went there, and like for the next week, he was like flipping out. He's like, I want to go to Chick Fil A. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that that was a good time. Is, to is, it, is it because they glorify God so much that people? I mean, like, him? they never open on Sundays, and I feel like that helps them because then they're sort of, everyone thinks about them all day Sunday because they can't have Chick Fil A, and then on Monday they're like, yes, I can eat Chick Fil A. Like, I don't know why. But, like, they make the same amount of sales as other restaurants that don't clothe on Sunday. Right. So, I mean, like, I don't know. It's crazy. People, people. I think a lot of people respect that they're actually clothed on Sunday. Yeah, like, when I go and shop at Chick-fil-A, I feel like I'm donating to a charity. I mean, I'm not. But I feel like I am because I'm like, it's such a good corporation. Yeah. I should buy their chicken. So, so the moral, moral lesson that we can get from this is to... Eat more chicken. <laughs> Eat more chicken. Awesome. <laughs> That's moral. <laughs> Don't eat beef. Which is that they have dwarf houses here. They sell steak at Chick Fil A. Yeah. It's so depressing. I'm like, I can buy a cheeseburger at Chick Fil A. <laughs> All the cows are weeping in the back. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> You're hilarious, dude. This video is. <laughs> oh, did we have to tell them to answer the answer to last week's question? Yeah. Um, my guess was seven. He says I'm wrong. Anyway, last week's question, we got to oh. repeat it. For oh, yeah. It was, we, how many wise men visited Jesus, right? Yes. And you, you said seven. Explain yourself. It's a good guess. <laughs> it's a good I'm guess. guessing he's not three. It's probably yeah, about 8,000. Because so. we actually don't. It does, the Bible never actually says it. But you know it's plural because it's magi. Right. Which is what I just learned from my mom like three seconds ago, and now I look smart. Exactly. She makes you're me good, feel smart. You're good at that. You're good at yeah. That. Yeah. So nobody knows. Mm hmm. You don't. It could, see, they had three gifts, three important gifts, but it actually never says if that was the only gifts they gave or not. Yeah, it's like when you're, someone buys you like a really epic present, but you only get one, it's because they spent all their money on that. Mm hmm. So you only tell people about that one present, not about the others. Yeah. So maybe they brought them like fruit fruitcake or something. Fruitcake. <laughs> maybe I they not. had fruitcake back then. Yeah, I don't think they brought them yeah. fruitcake. But I'm guessing it was a big caravan because they got hold of the king. Oh yeah, the king noticed. Yeah. You wouldn't notice just three dudes walking through like, hey, oh, those must be wise men. Come on in. <laughs> it's like yeah, exactly. a bunch of people would do. Yeah. So, I so guess. Anyway. We should talk about Jesus and something like that. We should talk about Jesus. I mean, it's a <laughs> ministry know, video. It the is, Wizife it is. Bit, the Wizife Ministry. It's this new rapper name. I'm, I'm Lil Money, this my boy Wizife. Well, here we're gonna throw down. <laughs> that was. Okay, okay. Let, let's, actually, let's actually get something out of here. So okay. We can take, take away. So. For, well, the biggest thing to get out of, out of this is, you know, he has, a, as his personality is very unique here. And <laughs> I love your word choice. It's unique. It's unique. It <laughs> He's is so very special, unique. special, Ed. And he talks sometimes without thinking, which makes it even more unique. Should we make a five-second pause? <laughs> Why? I don't know. You might want to edit something out of that. <laughs> no? no? no, no, no. Okay. That's perfectly fine. You probably shouldn't like have told me that. <laughs> you should have just <laughs> let me, like, flow. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the point is that... If you're around people, is you always it's always best to act yourself. Yeah, like my sort of like my whole life goal is to not be like everybody else, and like when I act like other people, I mean I don't really care, but like I don't want to just be like, oh I want to fit in, because then like when other people are doing like when people are doing good things, it's okay to fit in, but when people are doing like bad stuff it's not so like I just sort of figure I shouldn't fit in any time right like I was at I was at a concert the other day and at the end these these two drunk guys were in this jeep and they they were driving by they had like a whole bunch of loaves of bread it was like Jimmy John's bread which they're freaky fast they're like really their their whole thing is we have faster delivery than everybody uh -huh. they're like we're fast we're freaky fast and so anyway they they're like hey bro you want some bread I'm like sure so I take the bread 
And so I'm like with these eight girls who are all like homeschooled. So they're all like freaking out because these drunk guys just gave me bread. And they're like, throw it away! Throw it away! You're gonna die of AIDS if you eat it! And I'm like, that doesn't even make sense! And they're like, <laughs> don't eat it! So I finally, I don't really think that I should throw it away, but I like throw it in the bushes. And like the horrors, they're not a mad because I'm like, I just gave into peer pressure. I mean, maybe right. it was good, but I right. didn't think I should throw away the bread. I thought I should eat it because I was hungry and nothing was open that late. And then I was like, no, I'm going to throw it away because everyone tells me not to. So I was like, even then I'm like, ah, oh, why would I do this? So like, I don't know, but it's good to just like be who you are and not let other people affect you. And let, let Jesus work through that. Let, yeah. The, let Christ in you work through that, who you are. Yeah, instead of trying to be like, like that way. yeah, and like Close other people's way. anointings, like, some people are anointed to be like smart and say wise, encouraging things. And like I, me, like me, like yes, <laughs> like Aaron here. <laughs> Aaron here. Yes, Aaron. And <laughs> your name's Justin or Aaron? <laughs> Justin. Oh, okay. With with Justin. <laughs> but I think we should make a five second pause. Yeah, that would be a good one play for that. People like Justin here, and so. Yes. But, like, I've never been all that, like, good at saying wise things when I try. Like, it happens when I don't try. Like, when I do apologetics, I never... Like, everyone else has all these three points, and I'm just like, I don't have really three points, but I can tell you what I feel now, and God will use me through that, but it's not like I'm so smart I have a card and right. it or whatever. Well, I well, well, for myself, I went through this time when, um, right after my dad died, I had this... This I was believing in this lie that I wasn't good enough, and so I would push myself onto people, and I would um, I would try to fit in with them and you know do everything with them. When somebody did something without me, I I, was, I felt very rejected and mm -hmm. it was just it was horrible. But I was not myself. I didn't know how to be myself. I didn't know yeah. who myself was, and so it just it doesn't work. And actually, here's a good thing that that you can take from this is that if you ever feel like people don't get along with you it's probably not the other person it's it, it's good yeah. chance it's you yeah and so it, it's it's a good chance for you to look at your life and be like okay what what lie do i believe in or what's what's going on that that i feel rejection here or why why do i feel this or because your feelings are you know you gotta know what your feelings are because you're mind works through your feelings I guess yeah and you can and just so sort of ask the Holy Spirit like Holy Spirit what what am I doing now like why is this happening and he'll just be like oh it's because you still are, you haven't forgiven your dad so you mm -hmm. should do that and you're like right. oh okay that makes life simple right but like what he's saying like there's this kid at tennis I won't say his name because he might I doubt he would ever watch this video but still but like <laughs> he's like everyone like knows that he's like really uh what's the word, like, he really cares, like, what people, he's insecure, mm -hmm. and, like, so because of that, no one really likes him, and, like, I don't really know why, but no one does. Well, which, that's, that's, that's exactly how I was. Yeah. I was so insecure that nobody actually, I know. That you're just, like, friend. trying to get everyone to be your friend, and, right. like, you want everyone to like you so much, and, like, I don't really care what I, anyone really thinks about me. I just sort of do my thing. As you probably noticed. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, my heart is broken. No. Um, but, like, I have a lot of friends, and, like, one of the things that attracts people is sort of, like, the fact that they're not trying to be like you. They can just be themselves. I don't know. Just whenever I try to act like other people, I don't have any friends. Whenever I'm just myself, people are like, wow, he's really weird, and somehow that's good. So, yeah. I don't know. Like, I remember when I first started going to, like, we moved here, like, last year, and I started going to school, and no one, like, I started this new, like, guys hugging other guys trend in a non-weird way well maybe it was kind of weird actually yeah. <laughs> I sometimes was never mind well anyway so like now <laughs> it was a lot of fun where you like they're, you just, they think they're gonna do like little bro hug you got the hand in between and you're like bro no 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 you just reach in and give them a big hug and just hold them for like 30 seconds and they're just like <laughs> this is awkward what's happening <laughs> I don't know this guy and so, like, now everyone, I feel like everyone is just a little bit more free to just love everyone and just be themselves, just because I didn't really, I just like hugging people, so I just hugged everybody. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it was really funny one time, 
for Halloween, like we had a dress up day, and I wore my footy pajamas. This is really off pajamas. topic. Yeah, I have some pajamas. sock monkey pajamas. They're pretty sick. <laughs> it was awkward buying them out of the women's pajama section, and all the ladies were like, "You're holding up women's footy pajamas. Like, are these not enough?" It was really weird, but I made it out somehow. Anyway, so my teacher was like, "Wow, Daniel, you just look so adorable. I just want to cuddle with you." And I was like, "This is weird." She's like seventy-five. She's so. <laughs> it was like the awkwardest moment of my life. Oh, I was dear. like. Who is this person? Anyway. Yeah, cool story. <laughs> Yo, what was the point you were trying to get out, out, out of this? I just thought of it. <laughs> you just thought of it? Yeah, so. anyway, but like our whole class, like, I don't know. It, whenever they want to do something weird, they just come up to me and they're like, hey, you want to do this with me? Like this one guy, he had this idea that we go up and act like that we know people. Uh-huh. And you're just like, hey, bro, you remember me from like, you know that, you know, Mike? Mike, um... Chris? Is it? I can't remember. Mike or Chris? You remember when you were at his party? And they're like, oh, man, I don't know. And you're like, yeah, I met you there. You still uh, working at, uh, where, where are you working? And then they'll tell you, and you're like, yeah, dude, how that's going? And so his idea was to do that together. But like, everyone has these weird ideas, and they're like, yeah, Daniel would do that with you. So, I mean, like, I don't know. It's just fun to be weird and not really care. Right, right. The good thing about it is, you know, like even like Prison Crusade, like I was in the Prison Crusade, I can I can actually incorporate that into this video. Yeah. So anyway, going up and talking to the guys there, like I gave the example of the guy of the older guy, that gentleman that was like, "Hey, I lost my voice. Did did you have it in your pocket?" That's kind of actually how I sounded. It's crazy. Good at like that. But just you know, <laughs> being able to be yourself and being open and just if you can. Just be normal and human when you're witnessing to people, and when you're talking to people. You, you people re reply to it, and they they connect with it a little bit. Yeah, and it's very important. Like even just going out and t acting like people, like you know people. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I got a couple. I, like, I almost got this one guy at Chick Fil A, but at the end I broke down and I was like, I don't actually know you, and he's like, Oh, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> people feel bad that they don't. They don't yeah, and they're you. like, oh man, how do I know this guy? Yeah. What were you talking about just a minute ago? I had a train of thought off of that. Yeah, a train of You're thought. talking about prison. Prison and crusade. Else. About talking about being yourself. About. Yeah, I forgot. You forgot. It was a great thought, though. It'll come back. Okay. So, how long do we have to talk before it comes back? I don't know, man. Do you have, do you have a question for next week? Oh, I do. So what does love look like? And like, I know there's a song by Ian McIntosh. It's like, what does it sound like to sing heaven's song? Like, what are new? What do new colors look like? Like, there's new colors in heaven. What do they look like? You know, like, that's a good question. How can you how can you see something that doesn't exist? How can you like invent new things that have never been? Like, it's not like taking things and putting them together, but like, there's nothing and then there's people. Like, how right. do you do that? Like, because God lives in you now, so you have that same creativity to create things that didn't exist. Like, um, like all the great adventurers in, like, the early 19th century, they were all Christians. And they got their ideas, like, Thomas Edison and Lightbulb. I'm not, he, I think he was a Christian. Okay. Some of you people out there are going to be, like, Googling this, like, he wasn't a Christian! And then you're going to get, I'm going to be, like, hate I mail. Was. I think he Really? Was. I thought he was, too. Good. So go Google it, and if he is, then I'm right, and if he isn't, then I'm wrong, and I still don't really care. But I'm going to say that Thomas Edison was a Christian, but, like, all these inventors had all these ideas from God, and God's, like, the author exactly. of creativity. So if you ever, like, have a writing block, <coughs> you know the Holy Spirit. So, like, Ask him. like, I was writing my novel about Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> I'm writing for school. I have to write a novel, and everyone's writing about, like, this guy that got killed, and it's really, like, there was this one guy, his story was so intense. It was crazy. I was like scared. I was sitting in class. And it's all bright. I was like, if I ever read this at night, I would be so paranoid. <laughs> anyway, so I wrote mine about Mr. Potato Head, and my teacher, the first thing she said when I told her was, "That's a bad idea." I was like, "Really? <laughs> That's kind of a buzzkill." <laughs> like, "Oh, this is my story." Psh, don't do that. <laughs> oh, but like, I would like I. It took me like forever. To, I like wrote a chapter, and I was like done. I'm like, I have nothing to say. And now I'm already at, like, he's climbing Mount Fuji in Japan after he got kicked onto a cargo ship and rode with Jafar to the dinosaur he met. 
and they lived in a coil of rope and he was chased by seagulls and he's going to eat the bread of the waffle waffle and drink the saints the wine of the saints of old and it's a really great story <laughs> you should buy it but it's free so you should buy mind. it but it's free and it's not available Exactly. So, <laughs> I'll email it to you. <laughs> Still a rough draft. But actually, here's here's a good thing. Actually, a good thing when you brought up the uh, thing of being creative, creative, and God, God gave you this creativity, or gives people these ideas for like creating stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, did you know that Matthew's bow, that the guy that created Matthew Matthew's bow, actually had a dream about how to create it. I have the slightest idea what that is. Matthew's bow. You know. Uh, Matthew's bow. <laughs> you don't know what I'm It's like a hunting. Hunt, oh, compound hunt. bow? Compound bow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Matthew, okay. They're like the biggest retail bow oh, people wow. ever. You can tell I hunt a lot. Yeah, uh-huh. I and live in Georgia, but I don't really hunt. But anyway, it, it's, it's it's crazy. He, he was praying about it, about uh, going a new direction in life and didn't know where he wanted to go. And just he asked God and he had faith in that. I think that night he had a dream where... The plan, the idea of the Matthews bow came into his into his head, and the next morning he wrote it all down and wrote the design down. And before you knew it, he had the Matthews bow, and now he's now the company is huge. Está mucho grande for those who don't speak English. Uh, George, Wa another guy who did that was George Washington Carver, because like there were all these people who were planning like cotton. And then the ground wouldn't produce any cotton because they'd used up all the nutrients. So he's like, oh, well, peanuts can can re re nutrimatize the soil. What would be the word? Nutriate? Nutriate? I don't know. I don't know. It would bring nutrients back into the soil. Yeah, so then all these people were planting peanuts. And then they go to sell the peanuts, and everyone's like, we don't need peanuts. We need, like, eight peanuts to eat, and then we're done. And so everyone's like, we have all these peanuts, and we have nothing to do. So he went and prayed. And came up with like 150 inventions with peanuts, like axle grease, peanut butter. Yes! And like, Good choice, he, get, he had paint made out of peanuts. He had all this random stuff made out of peanuts. And I'm like, what? And he spent like three or four days and had all these things with peanuts. And now everyone had stuff to do with their peanuts. So That's pretty awesome. Yeah, and he was like a Christian and stuff. See, yeah, the God, if you, if you just rely on God, incredible stuff can happen. It makes life good. It does. Like, when I'm not, like, relying on God, my life really sucks. Like, I remember I prayed one time, I was like, God, I pray that whenever I'm not with you, my life would be terrible. <laughs> and I remember that? that all the time. I'm like, oh, that was such a stupid idea. Why did I do that? <laughs> like, those prayers you pray, and you're like, oh, man, never should have done that. <laughs> and I regret it, like, every day. I'm like, oh, gee, dang it. So... Yeah, no. but, but it's good for you, though. Yeah, I think gets, so. Gets, it gets, gets you back. I don't know, man. Uh, it might have been better. One thing I haven't really found peace in is tennis. Like, when I start losing, I just, I'm just like, oh. So, like, I remember... He plays a lot of tennis, by the way. Yeah, I play I played today from, like, 12 to 6. Ooh, I got a text message. But it's across the room, which is smart of my mom. Um, but I remember yesterday... Scott was talking about how he uh, things got tough with like he hurt his neck wrestling, and then something else like football was hard, so we quit football. And he was like, I just like went through a season of quitting. And it's funny because our coach is always like, whenever like it's tough and we're like slacking off, he's like, if you quit now, you're gonna quit on your family one day. He's like, and there's and like we always sort of make jokes of it, but there's this one guy. His name's Chuck Creasy. He was, like, the winningest college coach in tennis. He, like, he has more kids from his uh, college that have gone pro and made right. top 100 than, like, anyone else ever. So he came. I went to one of his camps, and he talked about the Q virus. And he's like, once you get the Q virus, it'll never go away. It's basically quitting. And so he would talk about, like, King Wimp is in the bushes. He's trying to get you to quit, but you don't want the Q virus. And so, like, some kid would, like, just sit down, and he's like, he already has the Q virus. Once you have the Q virus, it'll never stop. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, just perseverance is such a good thing, like, to yeah. have. Just sort of keep trucking, you know, whatever you're yes. doing. Definitely. And especially if it's something that God wants you to do, because a lot of times as we go through life, 
things will come up. The devil, devil will try anything he can to get you to stop doing what God wants you to do and keep on that path. And so it's so easy to get the idea of, well, I'll just quit. And, you know, just, yeah. I mean, it's really oh, easy. I'll just go do something else. It's yeah. so easy. Like and every single, pretty much every day at tennis, I want to quit. I'm just like, oh, I should have played baseball. <laughs> I was way better at baseball. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what I'm doing now, yeah. so. But, yeah, just yeah. persevere. And there was a lot of things we got out of this video. A lot of, a lot of little points. Really? Uh -huh. That's good. But, but it was very random. Too. Maybe you can edit it to something that's, like, palatable. Yeah. For the uh, general population. Yeah, I'll probably do that. And so anyway, the question, what was the question again? The, the question was, what does love look like? What are new colors? What does a color look like? I've never seen before. I have no was, idea. <laughs> so how, does the, how, do those, how do those two things fit like, together? I don't know. Like God, God is love. Because I was trying to figure out like what love looks like, and I'm like, I don't know. What does love look like? I mean, people are like, oh, giving to the poor. I mean, that's love, but there's more than just that. So what are what are some actions you can take to show love? Yeah. And that's like, a good one. So anyway, in, your, in the comment section below, write down some interesting stuff so that, peop that we can do to show love to comments. people. Comments. Oh, yeah. Comments. And when you comment, you'll actually be entered to win something at the end of the month. I haven't decided what yet because it's December. But last, last month... I was it was a ten dollar gift card which I haven't given away yet but I will. <laughs> well, that should motivate you to get on it. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't given away the last prize, so this one might happen too. <laughs> it will happen. I bought. I just bought like three ten dollar gift cards at Walmart. It will happen. So it will happen. Gift cards Next, to Walmart. <laughs> it will be. It will be. Um, a at the end of this month, it will be some kind of book. Ooh. I'll, I'll, I'll say that much. There's some good books. Yeah. If you don't like to read, you don't need to comment. <laughs> get a book, you're like, I hate books. Why did I get this? I want a gift card. Come in anyway. Come oh, on. Don't listen to me. Listen Five to second pause. We should edit that. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. Okay, that, that's it for the show, guys. I, I hope that's you got all. something out of it because it was very random. God bless. That's it. Let me do. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. Hope you listened to it and made it this far and didn't turn us off. <laughs> hey, you should give us a penny to everyone who actually finishes the video. A penny? Be like, here's a penny. You finished it.